Good morning, everyone. I uh, call this meeting of Lansdale Borough Council for January 4th to order. Can we all rise for a Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silent meditation? Roll call, please. Leon Angelico. Present. Denton Burnell. Present. Carrie Hawkins Charlton. Present. Rich DiGregorio Jr. Here. Mary Fuller. Here. Jack Hansen. Here. Stephen Maligari. Present. Jason Van Dame. Here. Tom Work. Here. Mayor G. Andrews Eckley. Here. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome back uh, to. Welcome to 2017. Um, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that we are uh, we are uh, at last live um, with our video recording equipment. Um, this uh, this meeting will be fully video record video and audio recorded. Um, everything you do, everything you say, uh, etc., will be uh, under scrutiny. Um, and uh, will ultimately be posted on our website. We aren't yet live with our cable access channels. Uh, those will be coming later, um, hopefully not in the near too distant future. Um, so I just want to say for folks in, in the public, if you do come up, um, you, you want to come up to this podium over here to my, it doesn't really matter, okay. Either podium's fine, apparently, um, but we will want you to definitely state your name uh, and address for the record. Uh, can't have shouting from the from the audience at this point, otherwise we'll we'll miss that opportunity on the cameras. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, we'll get started. Uh, taking us out, admin and finance, Councilman Van Dane. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, after approving the minutes from uh, last month's meeting, we discussed our financial reports, got an update. Uh, don't quite have all the end of year numbers in, but it looks like we will have uh, a considerable surplus in the uh, revenues uh, with with the real estate transfer, LST and EIT taxes all showing uh, above budget, uh, coupled with uh, expenditures showing a, a pretty large number below budget. There's a couple transfers yet to make before we get that number finalized, but uh, all in all, the budget, we are in good shape from last year's, uh, from 2016. Uh, we asked, there was a question about the Open Gov uh, portal on our website, and we, that is currently being updated and should, should hopefully be up to date within the next couple of weeks. Um, Moving on to business items, uh, the, the one recommendation we will be bringing to council is approval of the landscaping bids for maintenance and uh, grass cutting and trimming for several properties throughout the borough. Uh, the, the bids were done for a three-year uh, term this time with the winning, the, the bid that we are recommending coming from uh, Biasi Landscaping, uh, three years for a total of $136,830. Uh, we had a, we had an item on there about approving check signers, but we didn't quite get all the necessary information in in time, so we uh, pushed that off till to February. Uh, under old business, we had an update on the uh, trash removal specifications. That specification has been completed uh, with the uh, recommendation to, to send that out to bid uh, on the 19th of this month. And the uh, council members will get a copy of that bid for their perusal. Um, we were reminded that uh, we have already approved uh, advertisement and, or, or what is it, development and advertisement of that bid. So. Um, so, so council will see that bid. Uh, the public will get a um, the scope of work put on the website so that they would be able to peruse that as well. Uh, and again, it is to get a bid to see what the numbers would be uh, to, if if we in in fact decide to go that route. Um, under new business, we are looking at uh, some potential savings by uh, shopping insurance carriers for liability and property insurance. Um, 
We could potentially realize a great savings on insurance through the Delaware Valley uh, Insurance Trust, which we are a member of and use currently for uh, our workers' comp and health insurance. They also offer um, property and liability insurances. Uh, we use a different carrier for that currently, uh, but we have asked staff to uh, look into to our options to see if we could realize the savings there. So they will will pursue that over the next. Uh, it'll take several months to to actually uh, get through that process. Um, under uh, some other things under I guess old business, uh, there, we do have a potential. Uh, the settlement date for the 311 building uh, is is scheduled for tomorrow. So, uh, barring any unforeseen complications, uh, that settlement will happen tomorrow. Uh, we were uh, again. We have asked for uh, current updates on our professional reports to, from our various professionals that the borough uses, um, and the HR. Position. Staff is currently kind of in the final stages of interviewing, uh, hoping to get down to uh, a selection, the vetting process, and, and looking that maybe by the end of January we might uh, be able to agree with someone on that position. So that's coming. Uh, one other, one last thing under new business, uh, a grant opportunity uh, through the Growing Greener. Organization. Uh, it's a grant opportunity that would provide funds for a design on um, one of the projects that is part of the MS4 plan uh, that we had to develop uh, early in 2016. Uh, that, that actual plan now, uh, approval for that has been pushed off till later 2017, but this grant opportunity is, is kind of time sensitive and it would provide funds for uh, the design process of a project that is in that plan. Um, uh, so we have asked staff to pursue that grant opportunity. It's a, a grant opportunity. Uh, Hoping to get about a hundred thousand uh, dollars with about a fifteen to twenty percent match on that. The the planning phase of this project uh, looks to be about one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So if we can get that plan taken care of and shovel ready, that puts us in a better position uh, come September when those some of those other plans are adopted. And uh, so we think it's a it's a good thing, and it would. The, plant, the project that they're looking at is stream bank stabilization in the Whites Road Park area. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman Van Dam. Any questions for admin and finance? One quick question, Mr. President. Yes, the HR personnel, um, is the per once we hire or if we hire an HR department head, um, what other, what other remotely tasks is that that person going to be doing besides just HR jobs? In other words, job uh, description itself. Um, I'm not going to do very well answering that question other than to say I know there's a pretty full job description for that position. Um, and I'm going to look in Jake's direction for anything he wants to add. Yes, we can, we can furnish that job description, okay, as far as, you know, what would be expected, you know, of uh, the HR personnel, okay. Um, you know, but, you know, what we expect uh, that person to be, okay, is a full member of the uh, the management team, okay, uh, help us, to, you know, develop, uh, um, you know, develop the, the HR, you know, evaluate our existing um, uh, information, you know, as as it relates to HR, and then develop uh, uh, a uh, a plan for moving the HR process, uh, you know, forward and 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 making that a a, um, a um, ongoing part of you know the bur the you know the borough's operations. Okay, um, you know, as to. Um, you know, uh, what other duties, okay, they, they would obviously, the, the duties would still largely re relate around, um, you know, looking at, at contracts, benefits, okay, uh, you know, looking uh, to make sure that we stay current with uh, uh, the various laws that are, you know, almost changing daily, okay, uh, so that, you know, we are, um, you know, um, 
I'll say right up with the you know with the curve as far as you know where we, we, we where we need to be uh, compliance wise. Okay, ultimately you know they would be assisting you know with uh, you know. Uh, input into the budget. They'd be assisting with input into contracts. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, um, uh, there's there's more than enough uh, to keep them busy. You know, like the rest of us. Uh, you know, um, probably more than forty hours per week. Thank you, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Any other questions, admin for admin and finance? One on there, Mr. President. Um, Jason, did you mention that the Biasi landscaping contract uh, was for three years? Okay, all right. I wasn't. I wasn't sure. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Moving on. Code enforcement and land planning. Councilman Angelique. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, after approval of our December meeting minutes, we moved into our committee business items. Uh, Mr. Ernst pro provided a. Uh, discussion points on electrical permits, what you need to know, what we go through here in the borough of Lansdale. Um, just some of the small discussion points. A very large volume of permits that are applied for are never picked up. Uh, that becomes very, very costly for John's department to track them down. Did the work get done? Has it been completed? Has it been post inspection? Uh, so that he can close the permits. Um, informational for people is that while we provide permits for electrical work, we do not inspect the work for proper completion. That requires an independent agency for the final inspection, for uh, that it all follows guidelines, building code, that it's safely done. Post inspection by that independent agency, John's uh, group will go in, inspect, make sure it is properly tagged and stickered so that they can close the permit. Um, it was a, actually it was a fantastic discussion. We had a lot of uh, public input and um, was very well received, John, I think, and thank you for that, uh, that presentation. We spoke about our budget activity. Um, John's department has um, outperformed uh, every year, more permits, um, but one of the areas that it doesn't outperform is less citations, less complaints. So um, through a comprehensive um, effort, of outreach to the community. John's group has done a, a fantastic job of educating people. What needs a permit? What doesn't need a permit? People are more educated. John's department has less issues to deal with where they can focus more on what they need to focus on as opposed to chasing people down. They can develop you know, progressive platforms for people to be able to easily uh, acquire permits. <clears throat> Commit, uh, planning Commission report. We, um, on January 16th, there will be a presentation about the Madison Street widening project. This is not the Equus project for Madison parking lot. This is primarily on the street, widening that street to allow for additional parking. It's um, the street that abuts the back end of the Main Street stores. For those that don't know, I'm not sure who wouldn't know where Madison Street was. Um, it'll also, you know, work in conjunction with that ongoing Equus project. The Equus project itself, um, as an update, is in land planning uh, currently. They're going through the process of having their project approved for um, beginning, which would will be nice. This has been a, a, a long project. It'll be nice to see this project come to fruition. Uh, there will be also be a presentation on the 16th, um, 32 East Blaine Street. This has been a long, ongoing project too. The, uh, the the individuals that are developing this project will continue moving forward. Um, old business, except parking garage, just a scheduling update. A prospective opening, end of February, beginning of March. There's been some minor delays, primarily concerning elevators. Um, we spoke about potential new ordinances, curb, sidewalk, and house number inspections. Um, usually, we're what we'd like to think done when a house is being sold to protect the new owner, make sure all the information is from the old owner to the new owner, so nobody gets any surprises when they when they buy a new home. We will be having a, a presentation uh, by an individual who would like to present some, some arguments um, against. And of course, before we go through with developing any kind of ordinance, we wanna, we wanna research it, we wanna talk about it, how it affects people, 
day to day. Uh, we also spoke um, about uh, a, a potential medical marijuana ordinance. Uh, we're being very proactive on this because this is something that is coming. Um, we have a model ordinance that has been sent to our solicitor to look over it, see if it suits Lansdale, the community, who we are, and, and what we do here. Um, we also talked about uh, an ordinance revision uh, for accessory building definition. Currently in Lansdale, lots, um, we're limited to two accessory structures uh, in most yards. Now, it would seem kind of silly, but a patio, a paved patio is considered an accessory structure. So what we want to do is we want to look and make sure our ordinances are not overly binding or that they work for the people that, that live here so that they can do things with their homes and not have undue hardship. Uh, new business, Zoning Hearing Board, 623 Columbia Avenue. There was uh, the Zoning Hearing Board heard uh, about a non-conforming porch being built into an enclosure that was habitable space. Um, it basically, it uh, kind of projected into a side yard, which is not permitted at this point. However, they were uh, approved for that um, structure. Hill Hillcrest Shopping Center, two additional pad sites and parking has been approved um, for future development in that location. The January 17th uh, Zoning Hearing Board meeting has been canceled. We had a lot of public comment, uh, some interesting things concerning some of the things we spoke about prior and some, some new ideas. It was a uh, well attended and uh, exciting meeting. I invite you all to join us in a few weeks to come out. So I know it doesn't compare to Parks and Rec, Mayor, but we don't have fireworks there, but we do have a lot of fun. And that is the end of my report. Thank you, Councilman Angelico. Any questions for code enforcement? Anybody? All right, thank you very much. Moving right along, uh, Communications Commission, Councilwoman Hawkins Charlton. Thank you, Mr. President. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, we actually had a really productive meeting last night. Uh, we started with a Civics 101 schedule. Uh, based on our feedback from previous sessions, we've changed the format to monthly workshop instead of three weeks at a time. Uh, the first workshop will be held on Tuesday, January 31st, and that'll be the legislative branch where we talk about how the council functions, what our, our appointed officials do for us, as well as our, how our meetings are structured. There's only 10 spaces left, so uh, email Tracy uh, to sign up. Um, I believe there's information on the website. Yes, so if you want to sign up, you can go there. Uh, the next workshops in the pipeline um, will be the police on February 28th. And then in March, they'll be, we'll get to visit Judge Ed Levine in his council chambers, um, which was a real big hit the last time we did it. Uh, we've also talked with various department heads, um, and hopefully we'll get a behind-the-scenes tour coming in uh, the later spring months. Uh, so those dates will be coming up next. Uh, we also talked about the website. We took a look at the metrics and statistics for the borough website for the past year, and there are a few items that we found interesting. The most searched keywords were jobs, employment, and poll. The most frequently visited pages were the calendar, utility payments, and the White, White's Road concert series. Uh, the majority of site traffic to our site came from Facebook, search engines, and job employment sites. Um, we also discussed the meeting uh, the meeting recordings, as Den Denton mentioned. We're now recording and we'll be posting work session and business meetings on the borough website. We'll also be posting those recordings on Comcast and Verizon channels. Uh, we have the equipment ready, but we're just waiting for training to, to get set up on those. Um, also with the meeting recordings, we talked a, a little bit about programming. Um, what else we want to showcase besides just our meetings? Um, so if anybody has any comments on that, please uh, send Tracy and I an email. Um, possible options are um, ongoing development projects, um, how-tos for various departments, um, you know, some of our borough events throughout the year. Uh, we also started talking about the editorial calendar, how to ramp up our media coverage for the borough um, and capitalize on all the events we have ha happening in Lansdale. Um, it's at the beginning of the year, so it's a great time to uh, start to reach out to those news sources and let them know that what we're doing in Lansdale, and hopefully they'll come out and give us some press maybe along the way. 
Uh, also, we are looking into possibly a video production intern. Uh, uh, we talked about how the demands of this new video uh, channel uh, is is putting some burdens on our current staff, um, and maybe maybe having an internship or potentially multiple internships will help us assist uh, communica communication efforts for the borough. We'll also look at various colleges and schools as well as potential qualified candidates from other areas of the community. And that sums up my report. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions for communications, yes? Yeah, just a comment. Uh, you really want our ideas on how we can jazz up the station, Tracy and uh, Carrie? Uh, sure. I'll send you some ideas. Sure, there. go ahead. We could do some kind of uh, council act or, you know, we can, you never know. Fireworks. I'm actually already on the list. I, d I do like to hear that uh, pool and White's Road, are, you know, that's, that's, it shows you that, uh, you know, not that I'm prejudiced or anything about the parks and rec system, but uh, it, it's important to communities and it, it, our website proves that. Thank you. Any other questions for communications? All right. Thank you very much, Kerry. Moving on, economic development, Councilman Van Dane. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so at our meeting, we had a presentation from Pam Kelly, who is the CEO of the uh, Penn Suburban Chamber of Commerce of Greater Montgomery County. Uh, she came to us with a proposal to help uh, facilitate and organize a business group here in Lansdale. Uh, they currently actually do this in Skipback and Lower Gwynedd uh, to some degree of success. Uh, we've been trying to organize some, some type of Lansdale Business Association for some time now and for different reasons. It's, it's, uh, nobody's really picked it up and run with it. So Pam has agreed to uh, come in and try to foster that program. We are waiting to hear from her on a couple of uh, dates to get that started, but we are hoping to start that uh, by the end of this month, uh, if not early next month. Uh, she's agreed to run a 12-month program. Uh, it would be free to anybody that's a current member of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, a nominal annual fee for uh, non-chamber members. Uh, they would provide you know, monthly agenda and support to these meetings, and then hopefully the business community can grow uh, that association out of this program. Uh, the, the group thought that that would be a, a great thing here for the businesses in Lansdale. There's definitely a need and a desire. So uh, we're going to see what we can do to get that going. Um, other than that, we welcome one new business in November, uh, Visiting Angels over on Vine Street. And uh, we reviewed the, the Cannoneers as the business of the month of December. And coming up this month, Mr. Ray Liberto will be presenting the business of the month. The only other thing I have to report on, I don't know if Mary will get this in her report, but the uh, folks that ran the Christmas tree display uh, by the Kugel Ball uh, wanted to report they had over a thousand people sign in and it was uh, very successful, uh, even though it, they got shortened by a day, it was still a great, great thing to do in a great location. So help, help contribute to uh, the, the season here in Lansdale. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Van Dame. Any questions for EDC? All right, moving right along. Electric Committee, Councilman DiGregorio. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the uh, approval of minutes was 3 0. Our, our committee business items first was the uh, purchase of the rear yard buggy from the machine that we were talking about this past year. The uh, machine was earmarked for $175,000, but it came through CoStars with $131.85 from Alstech Industries. This will be coming to the next uh, business meeting for consideration for purchase. Second would be the uh, line switch gear update. Uh, the, the gear is actually 98% completed and ready to energize tomorrow. Next is the um, maintenance substation, excuse me, the main substation maintenance. Um, there has been concern about the um, security with our substations and our facilities. Um, our, our committee was talking about possibly looking into a security systems to protect and keep an eye on on our uh, infrastructure with our electric. So that's, that is uh, in process with our committee and also uh, Andy's talking to uh, 
other people about uh, ideas and specs and stuff like that. Next would be the uh, 2016 um, things that we uh, did this year with the electric. First would be the main substation breaker, the 145,000 volt and the 34 5 volt breakers. Next would be the phase one, and the Aldine Green project. Next would be the uh, DV RPC LED uh, light project. That, that's what we did last year. Next would be the uh, fiber equipment and training for phase two. Um, the guys are getting, uh, more guys are getting trained on the fiber equipment and we will be in the process about doing more fiber this coming year. Uh, 2017, like I said, um, our goals would be the repair and upgrade of the main substation equipment, uh, replace the substation in preparation for the Madison parking development. Um, next would be the purchase to install 2,000 more um, RX meters that we talked in the past. And finally, another, we're talking about the uh, IR fire, the heating system in the uh, service building of the electric department, about getting a, a new heater system. So we're in the process of uh, investigating that situation. Department operations. Finally, uh, the septic garage is, work has completed in the garage. Next would be the meter replacement. The crews are, like I said, we're um, changing meters out. And finally, the CPR certifications. The entire crew was recently recertified in CPR training. Um, it's great that we have a safety coordinator and the guys are getting their certifications for that situation too, to keep everybody safe. Finally, the new business, the power blip this morning at 7 a.m. was due to PPNL fault line in Hatfield that affected our main line. Power was restored in a matter of seconds. And that was the end of my report. Any questions from council? Yes. Yes, uh, you mentioned that, that piece of equipment you called a backyard truck or backyard, something? Backyard machine, yes. Backyard machine. And it, we estimated it at 175000 and we found it that we could possibly get it on CoStars for 131 Yes, yes, Mr. Hanson. I like that. Thank yeah. you. It's a uh, great machine. Um, with uh, We have a lot of telephone poles in our backyards in our uh, burrow. And having this machine is, is going to help tremendously with the labor with our electric apartment. Just because it's in the ace, it, it won't tear up a lot of people's lawns. It's it's smaller, um, it's smaller used, meaning that it has a has a buck, bucket attachment to it, so a, a lineman can actually go up in the air. Um, also, we take the bucket out. It also can set a pole, move a pole. Um, it also has have hydraulic lines for jackhammering. So it's a very multi-purpose piece of equipment that the borough would definitely could use and help our uh, manpower and our electric department. Keep up the good work and keep saving us money. Thank you, Mr. Anson. Thank you. A any other questions for Electric Committee? All right, thank you very much, Rich. P much appreciated. Uh, let's see, Library Committee, Vice President Fuller. Your, thank you, Mr. President. Your favorite report of the night. Uh, we had no committee meeting in January. Uh, we are due for a library board of trustees meeting, next business meeting, which is January 18th, uh, and our next committee meeting will be m Monday, February 6th. But, uh, thank you very much, and you can keep us going with Parks and Rec. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, suggestion for opening these meetings now with the cameras. I think you should start it with live from Lansdale. It's Wednesday night. <laughs> and just, just throw that. I'll out take there. it under consideration. <laughs> thank you. Uh, as all committees do, uh, we did like everybody else and approved our minutes. So I'll, I'll note that as well. So you don't think Parks and Rec is lax in doing that. Uh, we discussed a few requests that are um, that we're researching to move to council should they be necessary. Uh, one is the potential use um, by the USTA, U U.S. Tennis Association, um, potential rental of three of our courts on a couple hours uh, in on Saturdays from late. April, early May for eight-week courses for kids. We'll move that forward as we do some more research and decide if um, 
the user is interested in renting and agrees to the price that, that we will set forth. Uh, the other request that is um, in the research phase in the park system is a request uh, for soccer field usage, um, and this would be for the Merck soccer program. Uh, currently, uh, I think we're aware Merck is selling some of its property. They would not have a soccer field. They do have an employee soccer program, so they are researching local municipalities uh, for the potential use of uh, soccer fields. Again, if the fit is right, uh, we'll come before council uh, with a suggested um, use and price. So more, more to come on that as necessary. Uh, we had several successful programs following our last meeting and uh, in keeping with all the holiday um, hijinks here in the borough. Uh, we had a successful Charlie Brown Christmas concert over at Pendale Middle School. Uh, decently attended, can always use more there. I know it's a busy time of year, uh, but our thanks to obviously the school district, the Eric Mintel Quartet, and everyone who attended and enjoyed that program in December. Uh, we also thank uh, Alan Gold and Ellen Price Malloy, who once again put together a very successful menorah lighting program on December 26th. Uh, it was one of the most highly attended events of that nature. Um, so having it two days after the start of Hanukkah didn't seem to affect, actually the weather cooperated. There were 16 horns of Hanukkah applying, and uh, overall the night was very successful. Uh, the Santa house was also successful. Uh, help uh, with uh, the being so close to the trees, I'm sure, the tree display in the Santa house, uh, that was always my particular dream and goal to have those two uh, holiday events close enough to each other that people could easily uh, go back and forth and appreciate the both of them. So thanks to uh, all of Santa's helpers who were on hand and, um, and helped do Santa's bidding to all the children uh, who so chose to visit with him. Uh, we are now gearing up for spring and summer programs and I'll keep you, of course, apprised of them as we move forward. Uh, maintenance activities, uh, it's traditionally, you know, typical ongoing maintenance for this time of year. In addition to that, we are looking at some valve issues at White's Road Pool and looking into taking care of, uh, make sure everything's in proper working order. Uh, our budget closed out in good shape for 2016. Uh, we're happy to report that uh, the Parks and Rec Department did not exceed its uh, budget in expenses, but it did exceed its budget in revenues. So we're, we're very happy with that. Uh, on an old business, uh, Liberty Bell Trail update. Uh, the bids um, are due by uh, January 12th, and this is the section of the trail that runs from Andale Green to uh, Hancock Road to behind Andale Green, that stretch. Um, so potential bidders have until 11 o'clock uh, Friday morning, the 6th, to submit any questions. Uh, bids are due by 11 a.m. on the 12th, so by next, this time next month, maybe we will have some reports on on how that um, how the bidding went. Uh, we did touch uh, briefly on skate park update. Um, Carl is uh, researching the Tony Hawk Foundation and whether or not um, the criteria has loosened up some on that. So we're looking into uh, having seeing if we can get some money there, which we could put against the current grant. That, that we have, um, so we'll keep everybody posted on that. Uh, we did uh, have some, um, some of the residents who spoke during public comment regarding this issue. Uh, our goal as the Parks and Rec Committee is to have a decision on location uh, by this time next month. We'd like to uh, have a recommendation, our hope is to have a recommendation for council uh, coming out of our next committee meeting, which would be the first Wednesday in February. So, um, 
We talked about the uh, grandstand project. Uh, the bid packages are right now being reviewed by Chris Fazio and Chris Kunkel. Uh, we are on target. Our goal was to have them out late December, sometime in January. We're still on track with that. Um, so that, that should go out later this month. Our long-term goal, of course, is to have the grandstand uh, renovated by the beginning of this year's baseball season. So we're still on track to accomplish that. Uh, we've reviewed, we reviewed and discussed our park bench sponsorship and donation program. Uh, as we move forward with that, uh, Carl has given the committee some uh, recommendations and uh, some specifications for what other communities do. Uh, Justin Smith has graciously, he's our, our resident GIS, Guru uh, has mapped out all the existing benches in each of the borough parks and what kind of benches they are because as we move forward, if people want to um, donate a memorial or honorarial, honorarial, not a word, uh, a, a bench to honor someone, <laughs> they will um, be consistent with what's already in the park. We're also looking at... Um, a plaque program as well. Uh, there is a, re a specific request already in front of us to put a plaque on a specific park bench in our system. So we will come up and make sure, come up with a plan to make sure plaques are also consistent and we will share all the details of the length of the program and the charges surrounding that as we move forward. Um, we discussed pool policies under new business. Uh, Carl will be meeting with uh, pool managers and, and those uh, stakeholders in, in that area uh, to discuss maybe reconfiguring a few of the policies, perhaps, uh, not the least of which could include um, uh, revising pool hours, uh, admissions, who we allow in and what type of ID they would have to present, uh, relaxing the number of guests per member that you would be allowed to bring to the pool, the age of uh, a child that you can drop off unaccompanied. Uh, that kind of works hand in hand with the insurance piece that Jason talked about. If we move to a new carrier, we m that may have to be changed for insurance purposes. Um, and, and that, um, outside of the public comment, uh, most of which uh, surrounded the skate park, that concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Hanson. I just want to say, I really like what I'm hearing here tonight. You said you did not exceed expenses and you did exceed revenues. I applaud the Parks and Rec Department. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'd say I work hard at that, but I got to yeah, give I think props to that, that guy over there guy that's over not there. on camera. That's right. Right. Uh, Mr. President? Yes, sir. Um, I actually witnessed how that happens and how Carl does it. And I don't know how he does this, either through extensive study, review of past uh, statistics. Carl was able to set up the Santa house, see every child over a multitude of days, whoever wanted to see and sit with Santa, hand out a little goodie bag, and at the end of a multitude of weeks and a couple of hundred kids managed to have one surplus bag. One. So I'm not sure uh, what kind of witchcraft you use. I was going to say, that's... Cook your numbers, Carl, but definitely, uh, it was absolutely a Christmas miracle. Very good. Well done, sir. <laughs> Yeah. All right. No question. So really, your, Joanne deserves all the credit. Your okay. Se Got Santa's it. senior elf. Uh, she was absolutely wonderful, <laughs> and uh, she certainly enjoys it. My credit goes out to her. My my thanks goes out to her too. Thank so you. I, I guess that goes. That proves the point that behind every good man. Uh, there, uh, right. Oh, here you we go. All right. Now that the video cameras are on, yeah, okay. All right, well done, well done. Uh, any other questions for Parks and Rec? All right, thank you very much. Moving right along, Public Safety Councilman Work. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, three items of note from the public safety meeting this evening. Uh, first, uh, an update on the commercial vehicle parking ordinance. Um, we have now completed the vetting process uh, of that ordinance and are prepared to uh, send our, um, our proposed changes on to the borough solicitor uh, for the uh, crafting of a draft. Uh, and just as a quick highlight um, of those changes, um, they include restricting parking of the following vehicles overnight. Uh, it would include commercial vehicles, uh, 1,200 pounds and over. 12, oh, 12,000 pounds and over. Thank you. <laughs> it's a little light. 12,000 pounds. My, my, my Prius over. was in trouble. Yeah, yes, right. Yes. My Honda's in trouble. Uh, Motorhomes, RVs, and campers, uh, any unattached trailers, uh, and then any commercial vehicle that's solely designated to transport um, cargo or goods. And then, of course, there will be exemptions. Uh, that will be included in that to include construction equipment in an active zone, fire equipment, uh, et cetera. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, that will be forthcoming for uh, our review as a full council. Uh, second item was uh, we addressed an appeal of a handicapped parking request at 1032 Poplar Street. Uh, last month, we had denied this request based on information we had. There was adequate off-street parking. However, um, residents did appeal. Uh, Chief McDyer did a site visit, spent uh, a fair amount of time with the residents, uh, and determined that there really is a, a significant need there. Uh, so he did recommend that we uh, reverse that and approve, uh, and we have, so that will be forthcoming for final approval uh, later in the month. And then finally, we had a visit from the folks uh, from the Hometown Heroes Walk. Um, seeking approval for uh, the walk on Saturday, May 13th, uh, again, uh, initiating at Trinity Lutheran, uh, a 10 a.m. start. And we did, as a, a committee, uh, approve to save that date. As a side note, they are the first event of the year uh, subject to the new events ordinance that uh, we recently passed. So uh, final approval is, is subject or contingent upon um, uh, approval of that application, we, which we will expect will happen, uh, as well as all the regular insurance, et cetera. So unless there are questions, concerns, that is my report. Uh, yes, sir. Only one thing, Tom, you didn't mention, the fact that our committee was the first committee to get these new lapel pins yes. from our chief. Yes. Can, and can the you, whole can committee you is wearing Focus in them. on that, Tracy? Can you, can chief, you zoom chief in on the new on the Chief, new they've pen? been lording these pins over me for the last 20 minutes. I, we, we better get these pins. And we thank you, Chief. They're, they're, they're wonderful and amazing. Thanks, Jack. All right. Any questions for Tom? Fantastic. Lastly, Public Works, Councilman Malagari. Thank you, Mr. President. After approving our minutes, we jumped right into our business items. Uh, 2016 Roadway and Utility Rehabilitation Project, that's Crestview, Durstein, and the Force Main. Sanitary sewer laterals were worked on along Crestview Road, um, and sanitary line and manhole were installed on East 5th Street at the vacant lot between Crestview and Lansdale Avenue. Uh, there will be a request for payment, number one, and we actually did vote on that, and in the affirmative, for the amount of $144,399.60 to SJM Construction, that is for the first payment of that project. And you'll be seeing that in a couple weeks. After that, we talked about the milling and patch paving project. Uh, this work was completed the week of December 12th. Uh, we were able to get some areas on Wade Avenue, Spruce Street, the intersection of Cherry Street, and at Church Road, and then some areas on Cherry Street, the intersection of Wissahickon Avenue and Highland Avenue, and then finished up on both sides of Highland as well. The borough was responsible for paving or paying rather for the blacktop, which came in at forty thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty nine cents, and the bill for uh, PK Moyer came in at fifty five thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars and seventy five cents, and the grand total for this project is ninety six thousand twenty nine dollars and fourteen cents under budget for what we had budgeted for at one hundred thousand dollars. So we got a lot of work done. Um, and it also came in under budget, so this project has been closed out from our agenda. 
Um, we next spoke about the Knapp Road Bridge. Uh, the wayfinding signs were installed the week of December 19th. So if you haven't seen them, go take a look, go walk by, see how they are, uh, see if there's any resident feedback from that. And uh, we can also close this project out from our agenda. Uh, next, we spoke a, a little bit on the wastewater treatment plant. And so f there weren't any uh, Merck flow numbers for this month, but Dan did give us a good number. And he says, since we've actually started taking uh, wastewater from Merck, we've done uh, about 500 million gallons of wastewater from them. And that's uh, from 2013 uh, is when we started that. So that was a, an impressive number uh, nonetheless. Um, we then spoke about the TMD alternative. Um, so that is for the Wissahickon TMDL alternative. Uh, the next meeting for that is Thursday, the second Thursday in February. Um, subcommittees are being formed. Um, and there is a name change for the group, actually. It is now being called the Wissahickon Clean Water Partnership. And the plan will be called the Wissahickon Water Quality Improvement Plan. And... Then we spoke a little bit about the MS4. Um, Jason really touched on that, so I'm not going to go any further on it um, unless there's questions. Um, as far as the budget is concerned, we did start talking about um, looking into getting some prices for a six-wheel dump truck and uh, also a small bucket truck, and uh, we'll be getting some more information on that next month. And that is in our capital, um, capital budget for that. Um, in old business, um, the hometown hero banners have all been removed from the polls. Uh, they're packed up into the dock boxes provided by Ann and Ed Schuring and picked up by Lansdale Warehouse on December 29th and to be stored over the winter months. And also, uh, further old business, we got some correspondence from PennDOT that North Broad Street is scheduled, and this is in writing, to be paved this year, 2017. And uh, as we get any more information, I'll keep you all posted. Uh, furthermore, in old business, um, survey work was completed uh, by, by the Lans Lansdale Abington Hospital, um, and we identified uh, where our easement needs to be for the force main work that's there. And, and basically that area that we're talking about is where the borough line is and where the hospital property is, and there's residences along that area. We need to do the survey to see where we needed to run the work for the force main that needed to be there and where these easements needed to go. So the next step is actually getting those easements done. Um, let's see. After that... Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention in old business was our sludge truck that we uh, want to sell on Municipid actually uh, got a bid for $61,104, which was, uh, I think we initially thought it was going to be around thirty-five, dollars so uh, definitely much more than, than we expected, so hopefully we'll, we'll uh, confirm that soon. Um, on, let's see, on new business, uh, the Christmas tree pickup will be Saturday, this coming Saturday, January 7th. So please have your Christmas trees out. And any uh, decorations that are left on them will be coming onto the public works tree, I think, for next year's tree display. Is that correct? Okay, perfect. So if, if you're missing an ornament, you might find it on the holiday tree display. Um, Let's see, in public comment, we did have a resident come from Shaw Avenue to discuss uh, the snow removal practices from our large storm that we had last year um, and to see how possibly we could um, alter or, or um, change our snow removal practice on that street. So uh, we did address some concerns and we'll be in contact with that resident as, as the winter progresses and... Uh, We've had some ideas of how to make sure that residents are aware of what streets were plowed um, and when they might be plowed, and also telephone numbers to call uh, if they haven't been plowed. Um, other than that, unless I'm missing something, that ends my report. Well done, sir. Thank you. All right. Any questions for Public Works? Yes, Mr. Hanson. I just have to say, we've really thrown down the gauntlet tonight on saving money. So... Let's all keep it Let's up. Let's keep it up. Thank you. 12 more months, and we're not going to have any budget problems at all next all right. year. Thank you. All right. Excellent. 
Uh, that concludes our reports, uh, announcements. We'll, uh, we'll do it in an orderly fashion. To my left, coming this way, anyone? All right. To my right, going in this direction, yes. Go for it. Okay. Uh, January 11th, just to remind everyone, is the International Spring Festival kickoff dinner. Uh, all of you should have received an invitation. If you can make it, I highly recommend it. Great food and a little glimpse at what a great day uh, um, the event will be when it is held officially in, in April. Um, and since I didn't have a library, report. I'll plug the library a little bit. Always a lot happening there. Uh, there's a day off of school coming up in January. The library is always a popular place on those days. Plenty of programs, day, evening, weekends, movies, book sales, cribbage, game nights, uh, all kinds of clubs you can join. So take advantage of your local library. And, and I will add, sorry, uh, John, welcome aboard. Uh, everybody's making you look really good. You, the admin and finance meeting ended not only on time, but early. People are saving money, so uh, you know, keep it up. Anyone else to my right? Yes, Mr. DiGorio. Thank you, Mr. President. Hey, just a, a word of note about uh, with the weather and inclement weather with the snow. Look out for your neighbors. If neighbors need help shoveling snow or anything, look out for the elderly and, like I said, reach out and help people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? All right. Uh, public comment. Do we have anyone this evening? Dan, Dan, you have public comment? Go for it. Come on up. This is unusual. A committee meeting, but I, I want to give credit to Bob Miller, who drove the truck almost the entire time that uh, we've had it. it. He took really good care of it, and I think that's one reason we received so much money for it. Thanks. We we're talking about the sludge truck, in case anyone was confused. Yeah, we, it sounds like we got thirty around thirty thousand dollars more than we anticipated. So. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I've never, for for the record, I've never seen him stand up and say anything in public comment either. So, <laughs> this is a this is a first, a night of firsts. Wonderful. Do we have any uh, other public comment? Uh, Mr. Anyone? President, I'm just curious. Oh, yes. uh, Dan, do you think that um, Dan, are we getting extra money for that truck because you're selling it loaded or unloaded? <laughs> just curious. Be careful how you answer that. A little extra that in the bed, you know. All right. Any serious public comment? <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. We are adjourned. No, exactly.